He was a Polish resistance fighter who volunteered to go to Auschwitz from where he sent secret messages to warn the world about the true nature of Nazi Germany's largest concentration camp. After the war, Witold Pilecki was tried and executed and for years described as a traitor and enemy of the Polish state. My guest for Perspective has written a book about him. Jack Fairweather is former Baghdad bureau chief at the Daily Telegraph and Costa Prize winning author of The Volunteer. One Man, an Underground Army and the Secret Mission to Destroy Auschwitz. Thanks so much for joining us uh, this morning. Firstly, Jack, if you could tell us about the book itself. It's been tra translated into over two dozen languages. Why for you was it important to tell this man's story? Um, well, Vito Paletsky did the extraordinary. In 1940, he volunteered for the Polish underground to report on a new secret camp that the Nazis had built in southern Poland, a camp um, that was known as Auschwitz. And he smuggled himself into the camp. He allowed himself to get captured by the Gestapo and brought to, to Auschwitz um, in order to create an underground cell uh, in the camp. And I think what I was so struck by his story is just this act of bravery, unbelievable bravery. Um, I've been a war reporter in Iraq and Afghanistan for the best part of a decade, and I think I saw in Paletsky's mission um, this desire to tell the world uh, the truth about war crimes, and that resonated with me um, when I began my research uh, five years ago, and, you know, sadly it resonates, I think, with all of us today as we look at what's happening in Ukraine. Exactly. And just talk a little bit more about him. How successful was that mission in Auschwitz? He did manage to, to get a cell together there. He was sending messages to allies. But in the end, he escaped the, de the death camp, but he was later tried and executed and considered a traitor for decades. So against all the odds, Vitor Pletsky spent over two and a half years in Auschwitz. He arrived at the camp's beginning when it was a concentration camp for Polish nationals at the very start of the war. And thus he witnessed the steps by which the Nazis arrived at their final solution for Europe's Jews. He reported on the steps by which the Nazis began mass murder on an industrial scale. Um, he created a network in the camp that was able to smuggle out these reports to the Allies. Um, from, early from early 1941, he was calling on the Allies to bomb Auschwitz. And it's one of history's great might have been, you know, had the Allies paid heed to his reports, which made, made their way all to London to, to senior commanders, um, you know, then we might not now be talking about Auschwitz, um, how many lives could have been saved. Um, so his, you know, his reports, it's true, were not heeded in the camp. But I think what's so important to contemplate with Pletsky's story is just that inspiring act of courage that in the face of Mankan's greatest evil, he was able to stand up to it, create a network of fellow resistors and defy the Nazis at the height of their power. And as you said there, Jack, a little earlier, his story also resonates today. I mean, you're mentioning courage there of fighters. We've seen a lot of courage displayed by the, the troops in Ukraine as well. But speaking of Pilecki, he was the first to let the world know what was happening in Auschwitz. And even now, despite all the, the innovations we've had with technology, with journalism, media reporting, it's still also quite difficult sometimes, and we're seeing it in Ukraine, to have an idea of what's really happening on the ground with all the misinformation and propaganda, isn't it? It is, and, and you know, Pilecki was right there witnessing the the building of the gas chambers, the arrival of Jews to their to their deaths. Um, he struggled himself to understand why the Nazis were committing these terrible acts of of murder. Um, it took him a while to sort of process that information to be able to re report on it, and I think that's uh, interesting to see one of the reasons why his reports were not heeded was that, you know, people outside the camp, people back in in the UK, in, in the States, you know, really struggled to comprehend the scale of the, the violence being carried out in Auschwitz. And, you know, I think 
his story is really a lesson for all of us, um, especially when we think about Ukraine today, of the need to keep engaging, keep believing the, you know, the reports of journalists and reporters who are there in the field trying to tell us um, what's happening on the front lines. And of course, to take action. That was his great hope, was that his reports would lead to action. And I think as a you know, former war reporter, you know, reading the amazing coverage by journalists in the field, um, you know, I can identify with that, with that call for us all to take action, um, not to sort of discount stories just because they sound unbelievable or discount stories because, you know, we choose not to be in implicated in the suffering of others. Um, we have to stay engaged with what's happening in Ukraine uh, in order and to keep taking action. And Jack, just finally, did you, like, were, were those, some of those challenges, were they the same for you? I mean, you've won awards for your coverage, your war, you've worked as a war reporter, as, as you've told us. Um, does, that, does that resonate with you as well, some of the challenges that the journalists are facing now, reporting from Ukraine? Of, I mean, just of course. And, um, you know, I think um, just hearing the story about that brave French journalist who was killed um, in a humanitarian convoy trying to report on the front line really you know, reminded me of some of my friends that I lost um, during coverage of the of the Iraq war. Um, you know, incredible risks are being taken to try and tell the truth from these from the front lines and you know I think it's beholden on all of us who are not reporters who are not suffering in Ukraine just to keep reading their reports tweet about them talk to your politicians talk to you know keep keep, keep that conversation going so that we you know don't turn away um, that's what the Nazis hoped would happen when it came to Auschwitz that the world would ignore their crimes and you know Pletsky's story today why it's so so important so inspiring is that he says that we can't look away we have to take action that was that was his great life's mission Jack thanks so much for your time this morning that's Jack Fairweather award-winning journalist and author of The Volunteer thanks so much